as we have our first look at the Musée d'Orsay. This used to be a train station until about 50 years ago, and it was abandoned for several decades, and it was almost demolished in the 1970s. But fortunately for us, it was preserved and converted into a museum of Impressionism. It also contains other art styles from the French 19th century, including some sculpture and some furnishings and decorative arts, but mostly it's the Impressionist collection that will catch your eye in Dorset. Here you'll find the great masterpieces by Manet and Monet, Gauguin, Van Gogh, Renoir, Pizarro, all of the greatest of the French Impressionists. They even have some of their sculpture on exhibit, and you'll find some sculpture by Rodin in the museum as well. Never has painting expressed beauty more perfectly than during the Impressionist period. For most art lovers, this is their favorite school of art, and this is the best collection of French Impressionism to be found any place in the world. No other museum even comes close to the collection in the Orsay Museum. You can use your video cameras in here. Many museums restrict the use of video. But fortunately for us and the program, we're able to bring these beautiful images back to you. We're now in the Monet Gallery with his famous paintings of the Japanese bridge at his gardens at Giverny. He created those gardens himself and spent the last 30 years of his life gardening and painting and enjoying life north of Paris, near Rouen. There are several dozen paintings by the great master, so it's quite interesting to compare his style from one painting to the next, and you can see how the artist evolved during the course of his career. You see several views of the cathedral at Rouen, the Houses of Parliament in London, see the wheat stack series and in the next gallery you'll find statues and paintings by Renoir. Interesting that his statues reflect the same style you'll find in the great paintings by Renoir. He's perhaps right up there with Monet as the world's most admired painter from the 19th century. The Impressionists give you a feeling of their subject matter rather than a photographic, realistic viewpoint of it. And ironically, even though this school of art has become perhaps the most popular among museum goers and typical art viewers in the modern world, when it was introduced back in the late 19th century, it was quickly rejected by all of the critics and the established art schools of the period who looked down upon this as an inferior type of painting. But the Impressionists created a new way of seeing and a new way of painting. My personal favorite is Renoir's dance at the Moulin de la Galette. This was a popular gathering spot in Paris back in the 1860s, 1870s in Montmartre and they would have afternoon dances. Renoir later went on to paint a series of nudes. You see a great view of Montmartre from the Musée d'Orsay. This shocking display of naked ladies with well-dressed gentlemen was an outrage in Parisian society at the time, painted by Manet. It became a breakthrough painting, Le Déjeuner, later accepted as one of the great masterpieces of the pre-impressionist work from Manet. More pieces from Monet, the field of poppies. You can just wander from gallery to gallery in the Orsay Museum. Here you see the overall structure of the museum, formerly a train station. It was abandoned because the station was too short for the longer trains that were developed in the early 20th century. A remarkable glass and steel ceiling towering over this vaulted space. We're very fortunate indeed that it was not ripped down in the 1970s but instead converted to this Museum of Impressionism. There's Monet's breakfast scene again. The Impressionist collection used to be housed in a much smaller museum, the Jeux de Pomme, which is located in the Tuileries. That's still a museum devoted to special collections and special exhibits now. Admiring the works of Pizarro, he was the grand old man of the Impressionists. They all looked up to him as a teacher, and an innovative leader. 
Pizarro specialized in scenes of the city, and even in his country scenes, he would have houses and country lanes and people. There's lots of people here in the Musée d'Orsay, and you can sit down and rest and relax. It's a very friendly, comfortable museum. Wicker chairs, you can move them around, position them a little bit, line it up to sit back and enjoy your favorite painting. And one of the most popular painters, certainly, in this museum and in the world is Van Gogh. The sad, ironic history of this man is one of the most interesting stories in all of the arts. Van Gogh had this creative demon inside that drove him to paint paintings nearly every day in the final several years of his life, and yet he never sold a painting while he was alive. Recently, his paintings have fetched higher prices than any other paintings in history. His iris painting was sold for $43 million several years ago, and he's had other paintings sold for 20 and 30 millions of dollars. So this man is one of certainly the greatest artists that the earth has ever seen. His paintings in the Orsay were collected by Dr. Paul Gachet, who treated Van Gogh in the final years of his life when he was living in the sanatorium in the south of France. And here was his room, the artist's room. He's done several versions of that very famous painting. You'll recognize many of these paintings, the sunflowers, the vases of flowers, the ladies, the people who lived in his neighborhood, portraits of himself, portraits of his friends, and a portrait of the church near the asylum where he lived. Numerous self-portraits by Van Gogh give you an insight into his tortured psyche and to the brilliance of his brushstroke. It's a very popular room, as you see here, always crowded with the art lovers, straining to get a closer look. And here's a portrait of Dr. Gachet himself, who collected these works. Another great painter of this post-impressionist period is Gauguin, and there's a fine collection of his works at the Orsay as well. We can certainly relate to these Polynesian images that he's created with his unique oil style. Gauguin chucked it all, left France behind, and went native, moved to Tahiti, lived in the Marquesas, married a Tahitian, and painted these wonderful images for us. You've got to see these paintings in person. Another artist that you have to see in person is Sura. The circus is one of his great masterpieces. Sura painted in the pointillist style, involving thousands and no millions of dots. When you get up close, the colors all break apart, and you have this odd juxtaposition of contrasting and complementary colors, which increases the vibrancy and brilliance of the overall painting. So when you look at it from a distance of six or seven feet, it just sparkles off the canvas. A wonderful and unique technique invented by Sura. There's not many paintings on exhibit any place in the world by Sura, but in the Orsay, you will find several. And then after such an intensive art experience, you can sit down and have a break. There's a nice cafeteria right inside the museum. You see the large clock. This is the original clock from the train station that they have preserved here. Well, that was quite a visit. Be sure to spare time for the Orsay Museum. The other great museum in Paris, obviously, is the Louvre. And in a later program, we're going to take you on a deluxe walking tour with our Parisian guide, who is going to bring us into this museum you see here, the Louvre Museum.